Hello and welcome to my Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a floating island effect. So what you're going to do first before anything else is obviously start a new document. You can make it any size but for now I'm going to go by 800 to 600. Now what you're going to do now is that you're going to need a house and some rocks. So what I did just got off the internet some pictures, one shack, and one stone. Just open those up into Photoshop. Once you have those opened up, go to your house, your shack, and go to your polygon lasso tool. Once you have your polygon lasso tool, what you're going to do is just click the outline of the house itself. And I'm not going to be very pretty with this since I'm just trying to go beat the time and everything. But you just trace around the house or whatever building you're using. It doesn't have to be this shack or whatever. Just got a little spin a little more time on this roof. Alright. Now that you have it outlined, it, just copy that and paste it in your blank document. It might be a little too big, so all you have to do is go to Edit, Transform, and Scale. I'm just going to scale that down a bit. Until you get it to the size that you want it to be. I'm going to go for a pretty small size for this shack because that's too big. We want it to look, I would say, mysterious, I guess, since it's a little small building floating on an island. And there. Now that you have that, what you're going to do next is go to your stone document. And all you're going to do is start at one point. Doesn't matter what point, just start clicking and tracing good thing about rocks is that no matter how much you trace it always ends up looking like a rock if you don't severely alter it or anything so working with a rock is actually one of the easiest things to do on Photoshop you just keep clicking around and then boop now you got your traced just apple see it again Go back to your check and boom. You're gonna have to scale it down again just like the house. So what you're gonna do, just start scaling it back down until you like the size of it. Since my house is kind of behind the rock, I'm gonna have to move my rock layer down one. So now my shack is on top of the rock instead. I think I'm going to position these a little more upward just like that and there now what you need to do to make these more realistic realistic so you're going to need to use the burn tool what the burn tool allows you to do is darken up an image and by doing that it gives you off a more realistic look so let's say maybe the sun is coming from the right side so you're going to darken out the rock more on the right. Maybe a lot more on the bottom of the rock too since it's underwater. Just like this. A little more dark on the bottom. until you're happy with, with with what you got. I'm going to do the same thing to your building. I usually scale down my burn tool when I use buildings or something so I can just get the edge of it because that's really almost all you need to burn when it comes to buildings. It's just the bottom part of it. But you can also add more to it. You can darken it up if you want to. So I think I'll do that a little bit. Add more at the bottom. Because you want it to blend in 
to your rock. And the best way to do that is just by burning it a lot, in my opinion. If there's a way you do it, blending, and go ahead and do it that way. I'm going to do it my way. But I'm going to darken it until I can barely see the creases of the building. Once I'm done with that, almost gives off a shadow look. Just like that. There. Now we have a building shack dealie on a rock. Woo! Now I'm going to stop right here and do the rest of the picture. And when you come back, you'll have a somewhat completed picture. And I'll tell you what else I did to it to, co uh, to pull out the image to make it more like this. So just give me a couple seconds and I'll finish that up. What else I did to this was added a blue water like thing on the bottom here and added like a little texture to it. I smudged out the rock a little bit and added some mountains for more a beautiful look I guess. And I also added some clouds in there because you know you can't have mountain ranges without clouds and everything. And after I smudged everything to give it that rippled water effect, I darkened all my mountains. And that's what I have as a pro finished product, I guess. I hope this tutorial helped, and you should probably, like, ask me questions if you have any. Thank you, and I'll see you later.